setting valve lash on a mechanical lifter vehicle. So some of the things that commonly use solid lifters would be high performance engines, ATVs, dirt bikes, lawnmowers, industrial applications, things like that. This one is a little bit different than what I've done in the past as it calls for its valve lash to be set hot. So as I was pulling this back in in the beginning of the video, that is from being outside to warm up and get up to operating temperature. Operating temperature means the thermostat is opened, which this one has, and we're running at, I think this one's got about 180 degree thermostat in it. Because this engine is hot, and it's a pain to get this passenger side valve cover off of, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to set just the driver's side hot, then figure out what its cold lash spec is, and go back and do a different method to all 16 valves later. So right now, while the engine is still at operating temperature, I'll get to work on removing that driver's side valve cover and then bring this camera in a little bit closer so you can actually see what's going on. This is about the best view that I could get you here. What we've got here in this view are our rocker arms. So along this side that has four cylinders, in this engine we have eight rocker arms. They're pretty easy to distinguish on this engine. The ones that are closer to the exhaust pipe are the exhaust valves. The ones that are closer to the intake side are the intake valves. You can set the valve lash on almost any four-stroke engine that has a mechanical valve lash setting with the method that we are working on in this video. One ex exception that comes to mind would be 2008 and newer Honda 450s. They have a decompression built in with their camshaft that can cause some issues doing this. But if you don't have a decompression built in with your camshaft, this will work. What we need to understand in order for this method to make sense is our four stroke cycles. We have, generally, we start off with intake, compression, power, and exhaust. But the reality is that these cycle continuously as the engine runs. So we can change this and move it to any point that we want. For right now, I want to put the I and the E next to each other. So we are actually going to do power, exhaust, intake, and compression. Now I'm going to draw a chart that, these will, that will make this make sense, hopefully. Each of these strokes has 180 degrees of crankshaft rotation. Now when we're dealing with a camshaft, the amount of time the valve is opened by that camshaft is generally more than 180 degrees. The camshaft is going to be open on the exhaust and the intake strokes and closed on the power and compression. So I'm going to draw kind of a lift diagram for where the camshaft is going to open and close. It actually starts a little bit before the end of the power stroke for the power or for the exhaust load, comes up and then enters into the intake stroke just a little bit. So this would be as this graph shows how the valve opens. It starts off closed, opens up to a maximum height and then starts to close again. The intake stroke does the exact same thing in its perspective spot. So it actually starts back here on the exhaust stroke and carries into the compression stroke a little bit. Now we want our camshaft to be on its base circle when we set the valve latch. The base circle is pretty much any time that it's not open. So if we look at where this is at, 
the intake valve will always be fully closed and is actually almost at the perfect spot just as you start to see the intake valve open or the exhaust valve open. So we want to set the intake valve right where the exhaust valve is just starting to just starting to come open. Now the perfect spot to set the exhaust valve is actually just as the intake valve starts to close over here. So we will set the exhaust here. Now we'll head back out into the shop so you can see this in real life. Now what I'll do here is I'll watch this exhaust valve and as soon as it starts to open I'll be able to set the intake side. This camshaft calls for 22 thousandths on the intake and 24 thousandths on the exhaust. This is a feeler gauge. This one is 22 thousandths of an inch thick. This one is 24. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and roll this and we'll watch for this exhaust valve to just barely start to move. Now that this exhaust rocker arm has just barely started to move, we know that our intake rocker arm is nice and loose and ready to be adjusted. On this engine, I'm going to have to start out by removing the stud girdle. Now that I've got the stud girdle out of the way and figured out I didn't actually need to remove it, there's actually an Allen screw down inside of here. So what I'm going to do is loosen up the outer section and back off this inner screw a little bit. Now I can use my 22 thousandths feeler gauge and tighten the set screw until there's just a little bit of drag on the feeler gauge. But I can still easily insert and remove the feeler gauge. But you're more concerned with the drag here in the middle. What I'll now do is take my Allen screw and snug it up. Okay. After I've got that Allen screw snugged up, I'll back this off just a little bit, tighten the Allen screw again, and then snug the actual rocker arm pinch bolt off. And that's a little bit loose, so I'll try again. Now I can't get the feeler gauge in here, so that means I'm a little bit too tight. So I'll try again. And right there, there's just a little bit of drag, but it's pretty nice. So I'm going to make sure it's actually snug and leave it alone. Now for this exhaust valve, we'll rotate the cylinder some more, and as the intake valve just starts to close, we'll then adjust the exhaust.
All right, now that the ex intake valve is just closed, the exhaust rocker arm is nice and loose, so we can check and adjust that. The spec on the exhaust rocker arm on this engine is 24 thousandths of an inch. We'll do the same thing here on the exhaust valve as we did on the intake. Okay, right there, we've got just a little bit of drag at 24 thousandths. So we'll make sure we're tight, which we are, and that one's all set. Now I'll just go down this line of all of these valves because I want to make sure that they're all set up to where we can use them as a cold lash checking point. A little bit of an issue with the video camera there, so I missed putting the girdle back on, but now that it's on here, I need to tighten it all down to stabilize this valve train. Now what we would normally do is put the valve cover back on and be able to run this engine again after doing both sides. But because I plan to do a cold lash with this engine tomorrow after it's had time to cool off, I'm just going to leave this valve cover off and we're done for today.